Let's consider a second example of the pigeonhole principle. Let's consider a cryptographic hash function. A hash function h takes some input, we'll denote as x, and produces some output, we'll say as y. And typically a hash function will take an input which is, uh, significant, is quite large compared to the output value. For this example, let's say that the input x is a 100-bit number. And the hash function produces an output which is 64 bits in length. Now, in fact, in practice, hash functions will normally take an input which is uh, a much larger than the output hash value and b usually of different lengths. But in this example, for just for simplicity, I'll assume that the input is fixed to be 100 bits and the output is smaller than the input and the output is 64 bits. That's our hash value. So when we take the hash of some input, x1, we get some output, y1. And typically with a hash function, if we take a different input, we should get a different output. And that's a, a required, uh, a, a desirable feature of hash functions is to map different inputs to different outputs. But the pigeonhole principle tells us that that's impossible. That is, it tells us that there will be some inputs that map to the same output. Here we have n equal 2 to the power of 100. That's the number of possible inputs, so the number of objects that we start with. And we map them to hash values, or the places m, and there are 2 to the power of 64 possible output values. So we have a number of objects larger than the number of places. And the pigeonhole principle tells us that at least one of those places must have at least two or more objects in them. That is, at least if we take two different inputs, there must be two inputs that produce the same output value. In hash functions, that's called a collision. So we can not avoid collisions when the number of inputs is larger than the number of possible hash values. With a cryptographic hash function, normally the, the requirement is that the mapping of inputs to hash values is uh, random. Given that, we can calculate approximately how many on average inputs map to the same hash value. It is n divided by m, or in our case, 2 to the power of 100 divided by 2 to the power of 64, which is 2 to the power of 28, or approximately 6.5 10 to the power of 10. So the pigeonhole principle tells us if we have a hash function which takes an input which is fixed at 100 bits in length and it randomly maps those inputs to 64-bit hash values, then on average there will be 6 by 10 to the power of 10 or about uh, or 64 billion inputs that map to the same hash value. That is, we'll always have collisions.